The drive-in's golden age faded long ago, but its legacy purrs on at one cherished Burbank establishment. Cruise down Riverside Drive and let its 70-foot neon sign be your guide. This Bob's Big Boy opened in 1949, and while the car hops no longer glide across its blacktop, the spirit of that bygone era comes alive every Friday night at Bob's Classic Car Show. I met up there with author and chef George Geary, whose book, Made in California, explains how places like Bob's changed the world. So there aren't many places where you can see the nexus between car culture and food culture. No, and we're losing them one by one, what's left. Yeah, tonight is a bit of a throwback, a nod to their heritage, right? Right, because it was in the late 40s when this place opened. How long have you been coming to these car shows? Uh, well, to Bob's, I've been yeah. coming 25, 30 years. You wish they saw the car hops here? I do. <laughs> this one is beautiful. It is pristine, 1957 Bel Air. My dad had one, and what I remember as a kid is the drink spot that you put your drink. It's not a cup holder, but it's like an indentation. You wouldn't dare eat a burger and fries in, in here. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been coming here for 40 years. Back in the day, we used to park under the shade here, serving sure. hamburgers and awesome times. Bob's Big Boy serves up more than just juicy burgers. It's also a feast for the eyes with its iconic googie architecture. This style, which revved up alongside LA's car culture in the 1940s and 50s, is marked by its daring angles, vivid colors, and dazzling neon, all designed to catch the eye of passing motorists. And while many googie structures succumbed to changing tastes in the 80s and 90s, preservationists saved this classic example, now a cherished local landmark. We take it for granted today that restaurants are built around the automobile, but this car show, yeah. it reminds you of how much of a novelty it was that a place like Bob's Big Boy was designed around the car. And there are hardly any back east like this. And it's California because of our weather yeah. and our car culture. That's where everything starts is our car culture. So what is the story of Bob's Big Boy? There was a kid that kept coming in, uh, is how the story goes. Yeah. And he had a slingshot in his back pocket. They uh, made a few burgers and then they doubled it, made the Bob's Big Boy out of it. And he became a very memorable icon. Yes. So the original Bob's in Glendale is gone. It's oh, no yeah. more. It was a small little stand. They ground their own meat because people really didn't know what hamburgers were. 36, you know, you did. Kind of a novelty. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's interesting. Foods like that, people are surprised. Your grandmother didn't know what one was. They never <laughs> right. had one. They franchised the big boy hamburger, not the whole concept, because that was very unique. It had two patties, bread in between. You say they invented the double, right, the double, the double burger? Patty. See, original double deck hamburger is oh, the size. They're proud of it. Yeah, they have it neon if it's in neon. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they started that in the 30s. People start copying it, but it was the original. So is the Big Mac then just like a, a double deck knockoff? I say yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't quote me. Allegedly. Alleg okay. <laughs> There's so many fast food companies that started in California, and that's what's great about all of them, because they all have their unique history of yeah. where they are placed in our society.